Hello, people. Um, as you can see, I am still alive. I feel like I'm uh, apologizing for being dead uh, every time I release a video. Um, but in my uh, defense, uh, begin excuses, uh, I had just recently started a new job a little over a month ago, I want to say. And uh, also, there hasn't been much idle on content. Um, and I'm not particularly interested in covering idle skilling and all that such. Anywho, um, today we will be talking about some drop rate and active farming. And this one is going to be more focused towards people who are breaking into endgame or, or are pretty endgame. And I hate the definition or the term endgame because it's got a pretty vague definition but th this will mostly be i guess you could say advanced mechanics but they're good to learn regardless of where you are game progression wise so um so that's what we're going to be touching on today and i promise i will be releasing more videos when uh, world 5 comes out i'm just kind of in a uh, low power mode if you will say i'm still active farming still farming statues um hence the topic of this video but it's just been uh quite busy in my uh life lately so anyway without further introduction let's get to it um okay so first things we need to cover is drop rate um drop rate is one of the or drop rarity drop rate um, what are the other uses the terms he uses there's like three or four things they all just mean drop rarity this little stat below movement speed above class xp um basically i want to say it's it's basically the most important stat in the game because at the end of the day all the other stats allow you to farm mobs like Without enough HP, you'll just die to mobs. You won't be able to farm them. Without enough damage, you won't be able to farm them. Blah, blah, blah. You, you get what I mean? All the other stats allow you to farm. Drop rarity dictates how efficiently you farm. So the higher drop rate you have, the better you are at farming. Which is important. Granted, AFK gains is very close. Because if you think about it, you can only have one active character, so AFK gains are, you know, important on nine of your characters. Granted, your characters are doing different things. You probably have six of them stuck, stuck in lab, what have you. But AFK gains are pretty important, too. Um, and for AFK farming rares, which we'll talk about later, uh, AFK gains actually kind of trump drop rarity. Um, respawn rate also kind of helps there, too, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're going to talk about drop rarity for a bit. <clears throat> um, so drop rarity is a little uh, deceptive. Basically, once so before you have a guaranteed drop drop rarity, every little bit of drop rarity matters. Once you're guaranteed on a drop, however, um, drop rarity works via breakpoints, um, which basically means until you get to a, another certain breakpoint you are basically adding a wasted stat like I, I won't get into too many specifics on what the specific drop or breakpoint is per item because yeah, there's just too many in the game but uh, an important one would be like statues so for the rare drop table it's a one and two and then um so this is a 1 in 2 chance, and then you have a 1 in 4 chance to hit the mining statue. Um, <clears throat> drop rarity won't affect any of the in the items in the actual bag. It will only affect the bag hitting, hitting the actual bag. So well, I have 10x drop rate, for instance. I will hit this bag five times. If I only had, let's say... Uh, 6.8 drop rarity. I would only hit this bag three times. But as soon as I get up to seven, the game rounds up and um, and uh, would give me the fourth drop, for instance. Granted, it's not quite that simple. It's actually 7.5 where it rounds up for this one. Um, 
Uh, again, that's why I'm not going to get into too many drop rates. Uh, specific rate points. For statues, which is like, one of the most important ones, <clears throat> for non-M-Man classes, so basically whenever Gimme Gimme isn't active, um, the break point for statues is every 0.5 drop rate. Uh, X.5. So at and that's once you're over, I believe it's four, if I recall correctly. Uh, so you wanted to, yeah, I think it's over. If if you are over four x drop rate, um, every basically um, x point five drop rate, you should get um, another break point. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have five drop rarity, that is the be, the difference between four and five is nothing there's there's absolutely no difference in terms of statues um however as soon as you get to 5.5 drop rate you hit another break point and then 6.5 and then 7.5 8.5 9.5 10.5 5, etc for maestro uh they're a little bit more powerful because gimme gimme is a insanely strong skill um when gimme gimme activates when it's procs on a kill um your breakpoint actually gets to every x.25 so um let's say 5.25 5.5 is the regular breakpoint and and then it's 5.75 would be another breakpoint because it's every x.25 um uh whatever and, and the x just means whatever drop rate as long as it's a whole number there so every point every 0.25 add, added drop rate gets you another break point for a maestro. So that would be 5.25, 5.5, 5.75, 6.25, 6.5, 6.75. 6 is not a drop rate break point. Uh, 7 is not. So excluding the, the zero zeros. I, again, it's really confusing. A lot of people are going to, like, their eyes are glazing over right now. But that's the nitty gritty to it for statues. All items technically work this way. So, like, Spore Cap, same thing. Uh, you, it, for It gets ridiculous because at that point you need, like, 15.5 drop rate or something like that. So, for statues it's pretty practical. For other things it's not. All you need to know is that if, if you're going for statues or for other things... Uh, you can calculate out, you know, if you're adding relevant drop rates. So right now, unfortunately, I am unable to hit 10.5 drop rate. 10.5 would be my next drop rate break point. And trying really hard to, it's uh, it's tough. Um, you just can't increase drop rate that easily. Otherwise, I would have already. So I'm content with this right now. Not really, but I mean, I can't do anything about it. So that's where we're at. Um... But that that is only really relevant for active farming. AFK, the drop rate works a little bit different. Because once you finish an AFK session, the game rolls for how many of an item you would have received. So, for instance, let's say I wanted to kill... Or let's say I wanted to guarantee getting bolt cutters. If I am below um, two, basically, if I'm, I'm below two uh, guaranteed drops, or like on rate drops, I guess, if that's a better word to say it, um, uh, the game rolls randomly. After you have basically surpassed uh, two on rate of whatever rare you're looking for, uh, the game will start rounding it up and guaranteeing you a drop. Now I know that sounds confusing, but let's t let's take um, what's a good example of this? I can't think of rare drops in World One. Let's take for example a wood circle. Let's say in one AFK session I killed uh, thirty thousand wood walking sticks. At 1x drop rate. So we're not taking any drop rate into account right now. Um, uh, the game would roll uh, anywhere between 0, 1, or 2 wood jeweler circles to give me. Based on that many kills. And it would actually run the, the random value uh, equal to how many like 
you know you killed. So thirty thousand versus thirty five thousand. The thirty five thousand has a higher chance, but it's still a random number between those. Um, let's say though I killed forty thousand. So at forty thousand, I should have received two wood circles at one extra rate. The game then um, gives me two wood circles guaranteed. I will get two wood circles. It is now forced in that one AFK session. Um, but let's say I killed 50,000. So on rate, I should have received 2.5 wood circles. At 2.5, the game rounds up to three. So if I wait for 50,000 base kills, um, and this is not including multi-kill. Multi-kill does not affect this. Um, or kill per kill, same thing. Well, different, but the same. Um, this is just your AFK gain, so your respawn rate, and how many you're killing per hour. Um, if I killed 50,000, it rolls rounds up to 3. And I will get 3. There is no randomness between that. It, it will guarantee me 3. Let's say I killed um uh, 70,000 it rounds up to 4 you see where we're going with this after a certain amount the game just goes here you go you have them for that reason generally it's more efficient to farm for rare drops afk um granted this is not taking into account drop rate so let's say i have my 10x drop rate so Instead of 20,000, I only need to kill 2,000 because I'm dividing that number by 10. And I'm, I'm not doing 10.48, whatever, just 10 to make it easy because this is already going to be confusing enough for most people. So every 2,000 base kills, I should get a wood jeweler circle. So now if I killed 50,000 of them, I would get, you know, uh, 25 wood circles off the top of my head, right? 50,000, yeah. It's late. Sorry, I'm recording this at really, really late at clock. Oh, 1 a.m. or something. No, it's only 2 a.m. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Widular circles. Um, lost my train of thought again. Goodness. Uh, so, drop rate, really important. If you go AFK long enough, you can just guarantee a tremendous amount of rare drops. So, late, like late game, end game, you could use like a 12 hour candy and just like pick up you know, 40 wood circles if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, um, you just want to use candies to, to farm rares AFK. Um, so that's the difference between DR active versus AFK. AFK, it kind of takes the whole amount of kills and rolls it then and there. Active, it works on a breakpoint system. Depending on your break uh, breakpoint, you can guarantee a drop active. So let's say for some odd reason you had uh, like 40,000 drop rate, I believe is when it would guarantee it. So if you had 40,000 drop rate and you killed a walking stick, you would guarantee a Woodular Circle per walking stick kill. It's kind of ridiculous, but it would work that way. Actually, I think at 20,000. No, at 20,000, it would guarantee it. At 40,000, it would guarantee two. And at 50,000, it would guarantee three. So it works similar at active. Um, uh, but that's that's how the game rolls for um, uh, how many drops you should receive. So let's say... With five extra operate, every spore cap or every spore kill will give me one cap, and then this is multiplied by multi kill. Let's say I had ten drop rate. Every spore now gives me two spore caps. There's no randomness in that. Um, so active basically, you just get what your your drop rate is divided by the, the chance. Um, okay, so simple enough. What other things um was I going to talk about? Uh, oh, and then, so, I'll show you a little bit of an example of rare farming, or uh, active farming in in practice. So, I am active farming um, uh, for statues in World 2 right now. Maestro, I found, gave me the best results. It beat Mimic's uh, Bubo, uh, Bubonic Conjure on Mimic's. So, 
uh, Maestro Sandcastles is the best World 2 map to go for. And if you're curious, the best World 1 map is uh, Poops, from what I found, for Maestro, and um, Sticks for Bubonic Conjure. They were incredibly close to each other. However, if you can hit the 10.5 drop rarity breakpoint, um, Maestro should outperform vastly compared to Bubonic Conjure at 9.5. It's too difficult to hit the 10.5 on Bubonic Conjure. So while you are at, and then for World 3, it's uh, Maestro on Rams. World 4, it's Flums. So uh, on Bubonic Conjure, but there's no rare drops to farm for in group in World 4. So all right, that tangent aside, while you are active farming, you are going to want to maximize for crystal drop chance or crystal spawn chance, then drop rate, then you want high attack speed and high uh, movement speed. After that, everything else is kind of irrelevant as long as you're one shutting mobs. Um, and then this is why I was saying basically this is more of an end game or I mean late game. Um, focus because this is when you have an excess amount of stats when you can guarantee one shot mobs you have no trouble you know getting tons of drop rate if you can't get enough drop rate to do effective active farming it's just more beneficial for you to just afk and push through the game to the point where you have a lot of drop rate where you have a lot of the the prerequisites because Quite honestly, I probably wouldn't start active farming until I had at least like six, maybe even seven drop rate. Uh, but it depends where you are in the game, if you're free to play, a whole bunch of factors. So it's hard to say. Personally, I probably would focus on other things until I had at least 7x. And then in terms of statue, 7.5 would probably be the lowest I'd go because statue farming is slow and every breakpoint matters a ton. Um... To help you with statue farming, getting uh, obel slots unlocked, which is um, easier active, but you should be active farming for statues and rare drops and all that kind of stuff is different than active farming for XP. Active farming for XP, you use a whole different build. You know, you're in World Four. This is focusing towards like end game, trying to maximize your stats and everything. So. Um, you're going to want a, pop, a full family and uh, personal page of pop obels. You're going to want dice obels. And farming these um, <clears throat> active is a good way to get dice obels. So. Um, so let's go ahead and just start this active farming. You'll notice that I have the Kedak Kizor card on. You can snapshot its effects by reloading the map. So I'm going to go ahead and reload the map. Also snapshotting some respawn while I'm at it. Helps a little bit. It's not really that relevant, though. And boom, ban. So you'll see I took off the Get a Kizo card and tossed on the poop card. I'm still having the effect of the Chaotic Kizo card just because I reloaded the map with it on. And now I can put the poop card in the slot. I'm doubling the poop cards uh, instead of drop rate cards because it is better to have higher crystal spawn chance than it is to have overall drop rate. Granted... Nah, it probably isn't even close, even with a full breakpoint. But I really wish I could hit that 10.5 breakpoint. It tilts me so much. Anyway, <clears throat> with that, we will go active. So you'll notice I'm spawning a bunch of crystal mobs, and you'll notice that they are effectively the loot goblins from Diablo. They're just spewing out all this stuff. And look at that, an obol. <clears throat> And they'll probably spit out some more obels here because they just pop them out like crazy. So once you get to high drop rate and a decent enough crystal spawn chance and all these other factors, uh, farming for obels actually becomes a lot easier. But it's kind of like one of those, um, you know, when you're applying for a new job and they're like, uh, um, you need like five years of experience to get this job. But you're like, wait, I can't get this job because I don't have any experience. How am I supposed to get experience without the job? It's one of those things where it's like... <laughs> You need drop rate to make farming for the drop rate obels easier. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, it's it, it's mostly a struggle at first, but it gets easier as it comes. So, but yeah, if you notice, these crystal mobs are insane. They're just again loot goblins, loot pinatas, whatever you want to call them. And this is basically what end game farming looks like 
um, I'll I'll very quickly fill up my entire um, inventory full of um, obols, and I'll have to constantly keep destroying them. Uh, you'll notice my inventory is a little weird. I have a whole bunch of like one stacks. The reason for this is these mobs drop unstackable um, items, <laughs> namely being the uh, storage chest that doesn't go away from the drop table and the bag G, which also doesn't go away from the drop table. If you don't set your inventory up like this, uh, those will clog your inventory, and then after like an hour or two, you will lag out of control because there will be too many other items that you can't pick up. So that's the reason for the inventory management. The exact setup for your inventory depends on your overall carry capacity and a whole bunch of other factors, but you can pause through this video and go through. This is just a bunch of random crap I have on the first page, but these stones, and then I have all this... <clears throat> these are for giant mobs, these are statues, and then just regular drops. So, <clears throat> so yeah, and so it's been, I don't know, um, three minutes. Let's go ahead and check, take a look at our obols. Uh, I've already gotten two wisdom obols, a gold obol, um, and a bronze defense obol. And now, if you noticed, I'm currently trying to make some wisdom obols for fun because I have nothing else really but to do, better to do with my time. But you'll see, you could tell pretty quickly that this gets you a lot of obol fragments. Like, if you're diligent about fragging the obols on the ground, you can get realistically, like, probably up to like 1.5 thousand fragments a day if you were. If you were destroying every single obol, you could probably get like 1.5 thousand fragments a day, maybe. Um, and that's like 24 hours, so it's kind of unrealistic. But uh, it's quite a lot of fragments. At, and again, that's at this drop rate. Hey, look, our favorite the friend, the bag G I was talking about. So, alrighty. So, <clears throat> hopefully this showcased exactly why you would go about... Um, farming late game for this kind of stuff and ways to maximize it just basically know that you'll always want to keep pushing drop rate when i said it was useless to keep pushing it at certain points it technically is but you always want to keep pushing for higher breakpoints. um just don't fret about it like if you're at 10.25 or whatever on a maestro that's fine don't like kill yourself to get to 10.5 focus on like other things if you can get 10.5 obviously do it but don't worry about it too much and that's also without saying like you know there's tons of different breakpoints like you know a spore cap could have you know 5.17 drop right break point it, it depends on things so it doesn't actually but hopefully that makes sense also, I don't know if it's come through this video, I've slowly, or I'm recently getting over a cold, so. Um, hopefully that, I'm, I'm like, a, I could feel it a little sniffly right now, just because I've been talking so long. Um, anywho, I think I've rambled long enough. Uh, hopefully this was at least pretty informative. I think I went over the basics of this, at least, fairly well. If there's any questions, uh, you can put them down below. Um... I don't know when the next video will be. Uh, like I said, I've been kind of just doing this or killing sticks with Bubo, a Bubonic Conjurer in World 1 for the last, uh, I don't know, two months, three months. Um, I'm hoping to start streaming again um, uh, soon. Uh, for those who don't know on my YouTube, I actually do stream, well, I used to stream more on Twitch, um, but it's been a little while. I've been dealing with internet issues, and again, recently starting a new job, and all that jazz. Uh, so hopefully, maybe this weekend I might stream. <clears throat> I'm going to try to, at least. Uh, I'm also using new software to record this video. I'm uh, switching over to Streamlabs, and I want to test how that is. So hopefully that uh, this video actually comes up pretty well. Anywho, that was a in-depth but somewhat basic guide to active farming uh, and hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one